Good morning, good morning everybody. Lovely to see you this morning. Oh, looks like a gorgeous day. The weather's really looking fabulous. So, just nice to see you all this morning. Hey Lulu, nice. Lulu, all the bubbles. Hey. <laughs> Are you dominating? Are you dominating? Come on, off you go. Off you go. Sure. Oh, there we go. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Aileen. Thank you very much. Oh, yes, Vanessa. I am so chuffed that you're able to watch this morning. That is so fabulous. Yeah, everybody in the house is happy. And, uh, <laughs> so I've left the door open today so Lulu can come and go. See how she does. So yesterday was an official public holiday, being Youth Day. I hope you've all had a wonderful, wonderful time. Hi, Tracy. Good to see you. Yeah, sure. Philippa, Carmen, so many of you. George Corker, that's cool. Lo Good morning, Lani. Hi, Gail. Hi, Chase. Wow. Morning all, says Tracy. Mm, Tracy, so yesterday you got your confirmation. And that's awesome. Morning, morning, Shirley. Morning, Linda. Scotland. Oh, thank you, Gail. She says, good morning, precious Rose and everyone. That's beautiful. Celeste, good morning. I agree, Tracy. Another beautiful day. It's awesome. Judith Jacobs, good morning. Lovely to see you. Well, let's pray. While we wait for others to come on, we should get going. Father, thank you. Thank you for this day, this glorious day that you have given us. We pray, Lord, that as we spend this time together in your presence and around your word and your anointing, that there will be just such a wonderful flow of your Holy Spirit. And we just love you. We love your ways. We love everything about you because you're a good, good Father. And every day is another adventure with you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Papa God. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for the ongoing release of the wonderful plans of heaven that are being rolled out even at this time in our lives. Nothing about you is boring. <laughs> you keep us on our toes. You keep us expectant. We are captivated by your love. Your mercies are new every morning and great is your faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. Yeah, every day. Thank you, Father. Amen, amen. You know, it feels to me, morning, George, he says, good morning, Prophet Rose. George Corker, lovely to see you. Corin Witten, lovely to see you. Wonderful. Glenda Macman, waiting for lockdown to come to an end, Glenda, so we, you and I can have a good cup of coffee and just um, catch up with one another and, um, yeah, just uh, see what the good plan of the Lord is. Ah, D Diane Santiago says, from the UK, she says, very humid. From Chester in the UK is also Pamela Lloyd. And uh, she says, good morning, Rose and everyone from Chester, UK. Uh, so Pamela, I had the pleasure of chatting with um, Joe and Kunli the other night. And it was really just very special. So we are still so connected, even though we're in this place of lockdown. Isn't that amazing? Uh, it's beautiful. Uh, thank you, Celeste. I love beautiful crockery, I'd rather have a few beautiful pieces than a cupboard full of 
standard white. <laughs> Karen Christensen, so lovely to have you. Carol Kearney Dunn from Ireland. Praise the Lord for you, Carol. You're the most faithful, faithful vessel. You have stood the test of time. You've not only um, hung in in your own family relationship, but you have brought others along with you on this journey with God. And it's so commendable. Father will reward that faithfulness that you have displayed year in and year out. Praise God. Eleanor Spears, lovely to have you, Ellie. Praying that the Father opens every door and every opportunity to you, Ellie, that you will see um, such an expansion in this season. I want you to know that the old has been filled up. It's, I see like a bottle of sand, but it's all these different colors. And now the bottle is full and the Lord's putting the, this is for Ellie, is putting the lid on and he says, now nah, it's time for the new, something new that's come onto the scene. Ah, oh, thank you. Stefan, uh, Yvette Hodgkinson, good morning, everyone. Yes, I love your profile picture. It's a beautiful sunshine yellow. I think it's a flower. That's a pleasure, Carol. Alfie, also from Ireland. Wonderful to see you, Alfie. Beautiful Alfie, South African, but been living in Ireland for many years. Lovely to see you. Jenny Hardesty, praise the Lord. Um, Jenny, the Lord says, has been a line upon line, precept upon precept. It's been a very systematic restructuring. But he said, but now it's going to be by his spirit. So he's, for Jenny Hardesty, he's blowing over you by his spirit. Yes, beautiful. Yes, we are praying that this the end of this virus, Sharon van Dyke. It's enough now. <laughs> But we will not be going back to business as usual. We have stepped into a whole new place. It's so amazing. Ah, oh, hi, Jackie McCauley. Lovely to see you. Oh, look at that butterfly. It's between a butterfly with winking eyes on it saying, good morning. Oh, very nice, Celeste. She says she's got a beautiful cup for me. <laughs> Okay, that's good. When we see each other, you'll bless me with that. Lovely. Linda Mostert, good to see you. Wow. Uh, can I ask all of you while you're online, just to tag a friend on your comment box. You just type in their name and up uh, as you start to type, Facebook will recognize it and bring the name up. And that way you're tagging them and if they on Facebook, they will see that you've tagged them to come on to, onto the live. So that's a way to share, because it's about everybody coming on and getting blessed. Bring your friends along and let's just, let trust God to bless all of them. Yeah, cool. Here's somebody trying to come in. Corin says, good morning from Midlands, overcast and below zero, my word. Well, I want to tell you that this morning I went for a walk on the property. I walked about nearly two kilometers and I decided this is a new day, a new day. Public holiday, long weekends over and being far too complacent to sit on the couch. And now we've got to start moving. And as I started to walk, I said to my, I was saying to myself, well, I'm getting ready, my body ready for summer. And I thought, no, we're actually going into winter. So we, we've, this lockdown happened in March. So March to April, April to May, May to June, three months already. And we're now going into winter. And if we don't keep ourselves going, moving, we're going to be Teletubbies. So um, it's so lovely because the children, the grandchildren upstairs, where I live, they have a, a dance-off video 
And last night, as a family, we were doing the dance-off. It was fabulous. And so just keep moving, guys. We've got to keep moving physically and spiritually. So let us keep moving. Good morning, Almin Swat. Lovely to see you. And good morning, Rosemary uh, Grant Everly. I've missed you over the last few days, and it's wonderful to see you this morning. Wonderful. Okay, Linda Mostard says, Pit Mostard, outcome, work contract, finance, breakthrough, turnaround, restoration of everything that the thief has uh, stolen. Yes, we need to see all of us are crying out for this breakthrough, not always for the reestablishing of what we were doing, but the opening of the new, new ways of making finances, new ways of sustaining our families, totally new. God is showing us new ways. And so be ready, be ready for the new ways of God. Okay. I thank you, I see. And there's Avril Murphy. Welcome, Avril. So lovely. And good morning, Robert. Well, today, Robert, is a Wednesday. So we're trusting God for news for you to go to Iceland. We're waiting for the, um, the embassy. And so we're trusting God with you for that breakthrough. There's a number of you that yet were online yesterday. And um, we spoke about the Father doing something significant within three days, which takes us to the end of Friday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Get ready for your breakthrough. Get ready for your miracle. You need to know that God watches over his word to perform it. And he is not a man that he should lie, but the son of God. And he's going to do great things. Good day and welcome to John Blanchard. If you are on this live for the first time, uh, just type in first time. It's lovely to see who the new ones are. Um, Linda Master says, daughter, job contract, finances, breakthrough, income, turnaround, restoration, outcome for her. Uh, we believe with you, Linda, for that. If two or three agree on anything, it shall be. Thank you, Robert. As soon as he hears from the embassy about his trip to Iceland, he will let us know. Uh, R Rhonda says, I have much expectations. Dia, Dia, Diane Santiago says three day breakthrough. Yes, I'm ready. Hallelujah, says Celeste. Michelle Marquis says expectant. New gates openings. Yes, let's just look at, let's just start with that scripture then in um, uh, Psalm 24. Lift up ye heads, O ye gates, be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Lorena, yes, we're trusting for your permanent your papers to come into order. We're trusting for the good news of the Lord. Sandra Martin, so good to see you. Wonderful Elise Fury. First time to Janice McRyan. Good morning, Janice. Lovely to have you on board. Whoever has invited you, may God really bless them. And Janice, I want to say to you that you have come into your new season and God is going to do a mighty thing in your life. And he says, don't hold on to that. That is slipping off the table for I have something new for you. Mike Frost, lovely to see you your first time. I pray that you are doing well. And, um, and I trust with you for all the good things that God is bringing your way in this new season. Um, your season of healing. God has been healing you from the inside out. And now it's time uh, for you to stretch into the new. I just feel for you, Mike Frost, God says, time to rejoice uh, and don't let people's negativity hold you down. It's a whole new level for you. Thank you, Father. Ah, oh, look there, Janice McRyan, many of them have been saying welcome. And welcome to Mike uh, Frost, wonderful. 
So while you are there all coming in, there's 65 of you online. Let's see if we can get well over 100 come online this morning. And uh, Tracy says, welcome to all the newbies. JJ Fundameva says, trusting for direction and divine intervention from the Lord. Well, right now we stand in agreement with you, JJ, and we say, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we trust with you for a turning point, that this is going to be the season of this thing turning around, and no longer you're going to feel like the little dogs are biting at your ankles. This is in the spirit now but that uh, the Lord opens a new highway in the spirit for you, that he comes through with power and might and favor. We decree favor over you and your family from this day forth. We just say favor, favor, favor on the fi JJ Fundamavis family. Favor, favor in Jesus' name. George Corker, welcome. I see you're a first timer. And uh, for you too, we just welcome you and we say, may the favor of God be upon your life. Um, that uh, the Lord has given you keys, George. And Father says, use these keys. There are some seasons in your life that need to be unlocked. And Father says, now it's time for you to pick up the keys of authority that I have given you. You see my ancient keys. It's to open ancient doors. And so Father says, time to stand in the doorway and watch and see. For the doors that I open, no man can shut, says the Lord. Yes. And Rhonda's praying for a miracle for her eldest son. We stand in agreement with you. We call him into the perfect plan of God, the increase of our God. Um, yes, thank you, Father. Thank you, Car and Clement, for coming on this morning. We continue to wait for the good report of that inheritance that God has promised and the legislation also to change. So we have not forgotten and we hold up your and David's arms in this time. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. So here I am. Um, uh, I was going to read Psalm 24 and me find it for you. Of course, most of you, good morning, Colleen Armstrong, lovely to have you. Most of you know what Psalm 24 is, and you could probably say it to me, uh, but um, it, the Word of God, the Word of God is powerful, and um, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And so we need the Word. We need to hear the Word. We need to read the Word over our lives. Let me put on my reading glasses. Psalm 24 says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. This earth belongs to the Lord, not to the enemy. God took the keys back. Jesus took the keys back from the enemy. And then um, in, for Joshua, the Lord says to Joshua, in the book of Joshua, Wherever you tread, I shall give it unto you. So Father is saying that you can walk in a new pathway and put depression, anxiety, and disappointment under your feet. And so I want you this morning to stand up in the promise of God and the goodness of God and turn your back on the things that have been diminishing you. For all of God's promises are yea and amen. All of them are yes, amen. Yes, amen. So we're turning our back today on the place of low living, on the place of all those voices that bring you into doubt and unbelief, and you are coming in to the very, to the very uh, presence of God's perfect plan for your life. What you have been, it's a pleasure JJ, what you have been going through has been the preparation of God for what you're about to come into. I see the Lord putting new gifting and new weapons in your hands, all of us, for the new day. For the new day, there has been a preparation for a new way. And it's not going to be like it was before. You have swapped territories. You have come now into this place called the promised land. Don't, 
don't long for the leeks and the garlics of the past. You, you became familiar and comfortable. And so here in Psalm 24, it says, He founded the earth upon the seas and established it upon the waters. And it says, who will ascend into the hill of the Lord and who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart and has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord. And so this is a season where people are turning back to God. This is a season when those that got faint-hearted and disappeared into the background are coming back to God. Lockdown might have had a lot of restrictions but there's been no restrictions on the promises of God and he has been drawing you with cords of love that cannot be broken and as you begin to worship him even in that secret place and that place of intimacy your heart has begun to beat in your chest and you say no wonder I've been battling because somewhere along the way I got so busy that I lost your hand father I want you to know that father never left you not for a second he has walked with you he says I will never leave you nor forsake you but we get so busy that we forget that he's holding on to us I had the most amazing dream two nights ago I dreamt that I had this old car I often dream about cars and uh, I had this old car it was from the olden days it was pretty long like a station wagon and very square and it was painted with red oxide which they paint on a, a like a car if they want to fix the rust and then they spray it they, uh, red oxide is used on any metal that has suffered with rust and so it was still had this red oxide on it but i had this car somebody had provided this car and so i get to a place and i'm in the parking area and I go and do what I want to do, and I come back, and the car won't go. It has got no petrol in it. So I have this vehicle, but it has no power. And the vehicle speaks about ministry. And God is bringing you into new realms of ministry. He is raising you up. That's why it says, I'll get back to the dream now. I haven't forgotten. That's why in Psalm 7 of this Psalm 24, it says, Lift up ye heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors, so the King of Glory can come in. So you can have the vehicle, but if you don't have the King of Glory in this vehicle, the vehicle has no power. The vehicle speaks about your life, and God is showing you that he's taking you into a new dimension. But you cannot get this new dimension to have momentum without the power of God and the power of the Holy Spirit and the gift and calling of God. And some of you are crossing out of um, your previous uh, gifting into new gifting. Some of you are about to pioneer uh, in new regions, some in physically in new regions and others in new territories. Some of you are going to um, are going to pioneer on the online space and you, you're never going to go back to your physical office you are going to build an online presence and an online income I see some of you um, uh, uh, entering into a business of of um, house design online I see some of you having um, uh, an interactive blog where you will coach other men or other women, depending if you are a son or a daughter on this line, where you're going to coach them through health, coach them through boot camps. Uh, others of you are going to do um, estate agencies, but online. And God is going to give you amazing ideas of how they can do virtual tours through the houses. Uh, it's not that a part, uh, safe even for people to go and look at houses nowadays and um, they uh, well, the, the owners aren't so happy just to have anybody walk through their house and there are ways of means of the most beautiful apps that you can use today to bring in an income I see some of you are selling um, 
a, a beautiful product, face product, health product, vitamins, and not the old names that we've heard, but new stuff. And um, it's going to be wonderful. And it's going to get its own momentum. And while you are loving God and building the kingdom, so the, the income streams are going to start to come in on um, almost on its own and so father says i want to give you witty inventions and take you into a dimension that you have thought about but never understood how to get in it and god is a god of swiftness and so he he gives you the idea and then as you stand up and say i'm in the doorway father you need to go for it and a momentum will come as you go for it and so father is also chain adding to your gifting some of you have been walking in prophetic ministry for a long time but god says now it's your time to walk in not only prophetic ministry but in prophetic apostolic apostolic is proton it means a uh, prototype and so the apostles are the ones that begin to set a prototype. They open up new realms. And many of you have an apostolic anointing on you, not necessarily to build church. Uh, so we can have marketplace apostles. And yes, to publish a book. I want to encourage you on that one, Gerda. And I've said this to very, very many people. And I also for Carr and Witten, I want to encourage you. Many of you are meant to be publishing books and it's actually quite simple. So you decide today is your day and you write a post. You can write it on your computer. Every day you write a post about your life or about the Lord and a way and it has a thread that just lifts that person up and maybe put up a photo or two and in one year from now, you will have an interactive journal that can be published. It doesn't have to have the date on it. Don't limit it by putting today the year. It can have a date, the 28th of, uh, where are we? Uh, the 17th of June, I think we are, somewhere there, or 18th of June, uh, and no, uh, no year. And, and, and don't say Wednesday because it's going to limit it in the following year. Maybe there's some of you that need to put out interactive journals on a subject. You're just going to publish 40 pages in an A5 that can fit in the person's Bible on the work of the Holy Spirit. You can even call it bite-sized publications. You don't have to start off with a book that's so thick that you don't know how you're going to do it. And then I will, if you're interested, I will give you the name of a, a beautiful friend of mine that does publishing. And you just send it to her on email. And then she will discuss with you how much per word. And she begins to edit it and takes it. They, come on, come on. Her name is Elaine and, um, and Walty, Walter, her, her husband. And they are amazing. That is her, her, her job. And I have seen some of her publications. They are amazing. Well done, Judith. She says um, she is busy with her book. And so you see this uh, 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 scripture. Don't worry. Don't, uh, stay with me. Don't leave the program. We're going to do some prophetic ministry. Don't forget to invite friends. But we're going to just lay a, a bit of a foundation here. And so Father is saying, I want you to lift up the, the, your heads, lift up, open the gates, uh, open the everlasting door so the King of Glory can come into your circumstances. We need to welcome him because a lot of us are a bit scared. Yes, you do that, Elizabeth. Start today. Start it today. And um, uh, some of us, uh, some are a bit scared. And so uh, what is happening is, they have other. They have errors in their life that they don't want God to come fully into, uh, and so. So then, the writer of Psalms, which is most of it, is David. They says, "But who is this King of Glory? Who are you opening your heart to, and who are you opening your gates to? Who is this King of Glory?" He's the Lord strong and mighty. He is mighty in battle. He is going to fight on your behalf. 
He's going to bring increase into your financial realm. He's going to be your provider. He's going to go ahead of you. He's going to cancel the curses that people have put on you by their mouth that have spoken you down. If you will lift up your head and open the gates of your heart and allow the King of Glory to come in, He is going to totally turn your circumstances around. And I offer to you that within one season, one season, your life is going to be totally changed. This is not the season of licking wounds. This is not the season of going to try and resurrect and pump up something that has died. This is a season to come with clean hands and a pure heart before the Lord and say, here I am, Lord. I'm still here. I'm ready. I'm available. Use me, God. Use me, God. And watch and see what he will do. Some of you are going to be baking. I see you baking. And uh, small coffee shops are going to take your baking. I even see some of you opening tea gardens in your, on your beautiful property. Um, I have a friend that opens up her property on a Friday morning for tea and scones. Set amount, I think it's 60 rand a head or 50 rand a head for a tea, for tea or coffee and scone. And people walk in her garden and some of them stay and read. Others will uh, paint. Uh, and you see the Lord says, what do you have in your hand? What do you have in your hand right now that will bring in both ministry and finance? What do you have in your hand? Well, I have my, I have my paintings. I have that paintbrush. And that is what I have in my hand. I see a Lillian, a Lily to me online. And Lily... I remember when my children were little, and you know what? I invited five neighbors with little kids to come every uh, Wednesday for a cup of coffee and a Bible study. And well, we had to sometimes stand with our babies on our hips and shout across their noise. But together, because all of us mommies were in the same circumstances, we couldn't go to the regular Bible study because all the old ducks would frown at us because our children were making a noise. And we would even pick up our stuff and move out into the garden and keep talking about the Lord and studying the word together and the pen behind the ear and the Bible and the concordance. And that's moms need other moms. In the UK, all the churches, many, 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 more than not, open their churches in the mornings for moms groups, moms and tots. And moms come there, and they're not all Christians. They come there for coffee, and let their children pray, play with other children, and then they start sharing about life. And the unsaved lady is telling everybody about her yoga class. And, and then they start talking about what meditation means to them as believers. And before you know, they invite them to come on a Sunday morning and see what it's about. And all of that. All of that. The shape of the church is changing in an incredible way. You know, uh, some of you... Uh, you're saying, I love the young and I love the old. How about going to your local um, retirement home? I'm not talking about a, dim, d a dark d dungeon. And if it is, you're going to bring life there. But go and read to somebody. Go, befriend one person. Do their shopping for them. Read to them because their eyes are dim and they can't see anymore. Some of them are reading with glasses and a magnifying glass. How do I know? Because my husband was like that in the end. When my husband went to heaven, he was 66 years of age. But medically, he was 85. Medically, he was 85. And so you have to see people's um, weakness and minister in to that place. Be of assistance to those. It's amazing. Uh, I see Kelly Ann Neve says, I've just taught myself to knit squares. Knit squares or beanies or scarves. Uh, I see some Christian ladies uh, knitted uh, something of a few hundred in a group. They would sit, listen to teaching on their TV or uh, Christian stuff and knit navy blue scarves. 
and go to the disadvantaged schools and give out those scarves with a scripture in a little plastic packet. How, how amazing is that? Don't look for a pulpit in your church. The, the pastor that's there, that's his pulpit. God has called you to be apostolic, prophetic, to move out there. And in that moving out there, you're also going to have the uh, pastoral gifts beginning to be awakened. No ways can one person behind a pulpit look after even 40 or 50 or 100 or 1,000 people. We want to release you in this new shape to be those that pastor the people, that shepherd the people, so that those that are apostolic prophetic can uh, continue to build you and to release you and to send you, even as teams, to different nations because the shape of the church is changing. We're out of the buildings. We're out. We, we are now without borders. Hey, I see Jewel. Aberta says, I want to do something in our remote area in Australia. Come on, come on. Let's trust for her, Shirley, Karen, and Almin that move in word of knowledge and word of prophetic. want you to trust for Jewel Aberta. She wants to do something in the remote area that they live in in Australia. Let's get a word for her and see what Papa is saying for her. Okay, so as you get something, just put it up. Um, I also see the men. I see the men starting their own businesses. Some is wood, some is fencing, some is uh, car repairs, uh, some is accounting, some is tax consulting, um, some, yeah, uh, um, if Mike Frost is still online, Mike, I see you doing tax consulting, ha showing others, but it's, it's online and it's not heavy. He ain't heavy, he's my brother. Uh, I see some tax consulting. God is going to use what you already do, that, what you trained in, to bring in extra finance. Uh, yeah. That's okay. I see Leah and Heather said they're late. That's okay. We're still just unpacking. We're unpacking the new ways of God, the new ways of church, the shape of church and the shape of business. I even see some of you that are going to open your homes um, like a B&B. &B. You don't have to open your whole home. You just have to open two bedrooms or a bedroom uh, or even a self-catering that you don't have to look after them. It's a separate entrance. They come, there's a TV, there's a coffee machine, there's a kettle, there's a microwave, there's beautiful bedding. Uh, it's going to be of a high standard. And when people come through there, up the... Up the um, the East Coast from Picketburg and up. There have to be places where people want beautiful accommodation at affordable prices. Oh, how amazing is that? Some of you can offer your, uh, your service as a retreat center where you say, I have a, a, a beautiful big lounge that can take 20 people and a coffee facility and you're welcome to come and hire my space uh, to do small meetings and um, um, you'll be amazed. You'll be amazed. Witty inventions. Do you know how many businesses started making masks and hand sanitizers? In the day of disappointment, they launched into a whole new dimension. Anything that you can provide in the medical field will be amazing. From buying a machine that actually makes adult nappies and packaging them in very plain packaging. Because I can tell you, for the years that I've worked with my dad had a stroke, my husband had a stroke, and various people that have been ill, 
uh, what, how expensive it is to keep adult patients in nappies. Mrs. Balls Chutney. I knew Mrs. Balls. They lived here in Fishhook, and that was their family recipe. And today that sold off, you know, the, the production rights and all of that has been sold off now. But they had an empire with chutney. Can you believe that? Okay, so I see Shirley Monberg says, Rose, I sense for Jewel Buerta that she is very creative. There are several things that she would naturally excel in. Photography, art, jewelry, healing meetings using art, training people and bringing in a healing. I love that. I love that. And, and Jewel Buerta, if you're still online and you want to comment on that, uh, but I love that. I felt the healing using art was quite um, just stirred in my spirit. Yes. Uh, any of you want to add to that? Yes, that's on my heart. Thank you, says Jules. That's on my heart. Linda Mustard says, I want my house back that was stolen with four self-catering units and a hall for conferences right now in the name of Jesus. We stand in agreement with you, Linda. Let me just get your name here, Linda Mustard. And we say what the enemy has stolen, whether through debt whether it was through divorce, whether it was through family foids, uh, feuds, whatever it was, we say now, in the name of Jesus, this is your season of restoration. I thank you, Father, that you don't come and put a band-aid strip over it, but that you make it brand new. So I thank you, Father, for something even greater than what you had, and that it will be much lighter to carry, but it will bring in a, a, a wonderful income. And so we, to, we, it says we two or three agree. And so I thank you for Linda Mostard and I thank you for the restoration for her in Jesus' name. Marinda Britt says, I need a miracle for our business or job. Come on, Lord, miracle way maker, miracle God worker. Yes, we stand with you and say, let the way be open. Lift up your heads over his gates. Let the King of Glory come in. Jewel Berta says, wow, thank you, thank you. Yes, we are standing with you, people of God. Thelma, thank you. We're standing with these people. Rhonda went offline, but she's back. So we're just encouraging people this morning, Rhonda, that it's a season to move out of the limitation of what the lockdown brought and to step into things that are totally new and that God is going to give us witty inventions and online businesses. Juliana says, wow, Lord, show me a gift and a talent. I need a job in the season. We're with you for all you have lost, Lord, in the season. Yeah, Juliana also needs an income. And um, come on, Lord, come on. Come on, people. Lots of you have got things in your home that you don't need anymore. Uh, Juliana, I've got books for you again. And so pass it on to those that are willing to have a business in secondhand Christian books. You don't have enough to leave your home. You advertise it online. You do some photographs of your, of your books and you charge 20 rand a book or 30 rand a book or 40 rand, even 50 rand a book. Books are over two, 300 rand and the person comes to your door and you give it to them beautifully packaged and with a scripture, 50 rand that you wouldn't have had. And so let us help one another. Let us build up each other's businesses. Yes. Great Berry, lovely to see you. I see Rhonda says her son needs an income. Father, I thank you. The question to him, Rhonda, is what does he have in his hand? The father is going to use what is already part of him. He's not going to stretch him into something of the unknown. What is already inside of him, God is going to use it. And God is going to blow on it. Even as Jesus blew on his disciples, eternal life, miraculous increase. In the same way, we blow the breath of God over your son. And we say, come on, Lord Jesus. Come on, Lord Jesus. 
Uh, Estelle van Weyck, you okay? Don't worry. We're doing all of this with you, even if you only came in now. Uh, yes, and Thelma, that's quite right. And we need to sow financial seed. Given it shall be given unto you. Please, in this time of lockdown, don't stop sowing. The principle of sowing and reaping is automatic. It's like, it's like um, gravity. Gravity works without you praying about it. And so in the same way, let us not stop sowing. I will put up the ministries. I, I want to explain this. I didn't put up my personal banking details. I put up my minist the ministry, Word of Life's banking details. And when they pay their bills on these overflow, they will bless me. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, and so um, I will put up the ministry's banking details. And if the Holy Spirit moves on you to sow, then you sow. But we should be sowing. And that's what breaks the poverty. Yes. Lovely. I'm so happy to see you agreeing with one another. Uh, Jackie McCauley says to, I think it was Rhonda, that uh, son needs work. She says, I agree with you for your son. Elmin posted a word. Can we find it? Let me go back. Da, da, da. Let's be patient with one. Okay, Elmin says, and who was it for? For Jewel Buerta. I feel fa uh, Father says, you, Jewel, I feel Father says you are very artistic and feel that the Father says you are going to teach others. And I feel that the Father says to you, you are going to teach children in art. And I feel Father is going to use you to bring healing through arts and craft to children. Wow, thank you. What an amazing word. So now, by the establishment of two prophets, we have heard that it is art and it is healing. And it looks like children is going to be very much part of it. Thank you very much. So that was for Jewel. Awesome. Jackie McCauley says, yes, it's a spiritual law of sowing and reaping. Now, let me just say something about that sowing and reaping. Don't just throw your seed. Plant it specifically. If, let's say now you're going to plant it to Word of Life. Then you say, Father, you know, in the natural, you'd say, I'm so excited. I've got myself a lemon tree. And I'm going to plant the seed. And this time next year, I'm going to see this tree. And so you've named that seed. And the same in your financial realm. You say, Father, I am sowing the seed for a trip to Israel. Father, I'm sowing the seed for a job for my child. Father, I'm sowing the seed for this breakthrough and that breakthrough. And yes, that's quite right. Marinda Britt says, we do sow. We sow money, word, and prayer. But it's like it got stuck somewhere. And we do not get the breakthrough. And it's been going on. For 18 months, it looks like. For 18 months, bankruptcy looks like the option. Now, I want Shirley to pick up this lady, Marinda Britz, uh, because Shirley is uh, prophetic but also works walks in a business anointing. So, please, please, I can ask you to pick up Marinda Britz. You see, I have faithful friends that can help. Elmin says, I have a witty invention to start a safe house for babies and small children. <gasps> Man. A place, a safe place for adoptions or foster care until they go to adoption. <gasps> yes. Yes. This is wonderful. Elmin's anointing is working with children. And this is wonderful. Get on with it. Lovely to see you, Anna Tome from Ireland. Wonderful. Yes, break of bankruptcy. Yes. Lovely. Yes. Okay. So there we go. I've got to the end of the little um, messages there. And we were looking at uh, Psalm 24. That if you want to come into your new season, this is a season now to open up the gates and the doors 
of opportunity to the Lord. Psalm 24 says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, be lifted up your everlasting doors. You see, many want the thing to come right, but they don't want to put themselves in the place of God being able to do this. Because of fear, unbelief, they've done it before, they collapsed, they got into worse trouble. And so now they have limitation. The Father is saying, I want you to invite me into your circumstances. And I want you to know that even though you are very able, I am able to do it better. Because I am your Father, I am trustworthy, I've already written in the, your book of life, all of your days, and I think good thoughts over you, thoughts to prosper you and not to harm you. I've even seen people online say, oh, we must pray for the pastors now. No, no, no. Yes, of course we must. Don't get me wrong. But we, together, pastors, uh, leaders and people, are all walking through our Red Sea right now. God has heaped up on both sides everything that contended with us. He stopped it. So now we are walking. Now we are walking on dry ground into the promised land. And into the promised land is not going to be sitting on a, a rocking chair on a welfare system. People, I want to say this to you, that when we travel to other nations where they are, 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 are um, operating on a welfare system, they will not even come forward for healing because if they get healed, they will lose their, their, their money from the government. And so Father wants you to know that you are not sitting waiting for a government to change it. He says, my children are about to bring change in the earth. My children are rising up and are going to lead in the financial realm. My children are becoming the head and not the tail. Your day of the begging bowl is over. Is over. And I see Avril Murphy says, I'm excited about my jam making. How amazing is that? It's like the, the, the consumerism of, 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 of the commercial realm. It's almost like God is bringing us back to community. To community. But most of all, that in all of our ways, we will acknowledge Him. We will acknowledge Him. And as we acknowledge Him, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all of these things will be added. Be added. Support local. Support those that have started up in their home businesses. Support people that, that sell and you, they deliver your vegetables and uh, organic stuff to your door. How amazing is that? Take back your health. Take back your wealth. Somebody else has been managing your health and your wealth. And this is the season where we are taking back what the enemy has stolen from us. And the enemy is going to be underneath our feet. So if you are sick and uh, have a disease, today is the day that you stand up and you take it back. Start with a walk around your garden. Start with two, two tins of baked beans for resistance training. Start by putting on your worship music and dancing. Dance to your worship movement, uh, to your worship music. I, I saw a few months ago, somebody had wrote, written on, I think, Facebook. And it says, um, artists remain poor if they are lazy. And when I started painting, um, 
20 months ago, 20 months ago when I started painting, I painted every day, every day. Because I started painting for my healing, God was healing me. All of my first paintings were poppies. And this little girl called Little Red, which represented me. And then later on, it started going to flowers. And then the Lord said, no more red flowers. Now I want you to do white. And it was all my healing. And then suddenly people said, are you selling that? I'd like to buy a painting. And so just know that anything starts in a seed. And as you continue with your seed, it will grow. It will multiply. I, I, my son, he, has a, he is working, but he makes these most amazing, beautiful, handcrafted pens. This is called cherry, cherry, cherry ivory. It's a wood that he does on a lathe. He shapes this on a lathe. And these are stainless steel ends. And it's just a turn up pen. There's different four ones. And there he has on this little piece here over there, because he knows me, eight Chirosky crystals. And he gave this to me as a gift. But this is part of his, besides his job, of his online business and now it's father's day is coming so he's made beautiful pens and chunky ones some oh they're amazing and also he has made beautiful shaving kits with the razor that got the blade in it and the beautiful shaving brush i think it's boar hair and the, the brush handle and all of those fittings on the razor is turned with different wood on his lathe in the evenings. We need to support one another. I will, I will put, Debbie, I'm gonna put it up, uh, the advert up on my Facebook page when I'm finished the live. And so, yes, so let's see now. Uh, it's a season of canceling a discouragement and this new beginnings in lockdown that Juliana says number eight new beginnings in lockdown new beginnings in lockdown not waiting for business to open right now you know when we went into the lockdown the Lord said to me many will not return to their jobs for I will set them up for the ride of their life with the, with the things that I put inside of them are going to become their reality. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? And so God is bringing us out of the cave of Abdullam. No, it's not a Muslim place. The cave of Abdullam is where David went. And when he looked again, he had 300 men that their business had failed, they were in debt. They, it says that. It says they were in debt and distress and disillusionment. And they gathered with David, not in a little cave, even though it says a cave, it was, it was a citadel, a rock citadel. And in there, God built them up. And when they came out, they were God's mighty men. So I want to say to you, as you seem to be in this place that you feel like you've retreated out from society, thank you, Gray, uh, uh, you've retreated from society. Uh, it's in this cave of separation that God has taken man's yoke off you. You are not under the whip of Pharaoh on and on and on and on and on instead of being a follower, you are going to lead in the field that God has shown you. It's in your hand. It's in your hand. So Jenny Hardesty, the Lord says, I want you to know, my daughter, that you feel like you've just awakened from a deep sleep. 
And Father says, look and see what I am going to do. For this is your day of acceleration and increase. So keep going, keep going, keep going. Father says to Lara Bortma, uh, don't look back. Look forward, Lara. Look forward. Uh, I've put a table before you with the richest of fear. And the enemy is nowhere around now. I, the enemy has been scattered and is underneath your feet. This is your new day. <clears throat> Eliza, Eliza Faree, lovely. She says, flags and tablets, you go for it. And I believe that God will use you to teach people about flags and tablets. And it's, a, it's about the audience of one and worshiping him before him. And there are some women that are so uh, uh, afraid and fearful and broken that they would never, ever think of waving a flag in a church. But I see you having these um, flagging days where people can come and they're going to be set free. They're going to be set free. It's beautiful. Yes, I agree, Juliana. We stand in agreement with Juliana. Her husband, Craig, is in the UK and the doors for work have just closed every time. He gets it and then when you look again, they're changing changing players well we say right now the doors that you open father no man can shut the doors that you open father no man can shut we come against all resistance and all confusion for craig and we ask your father to open the door and open it wide we ask for a total turnaround that he will prosper in all his ways so that he will be able to get his uh, british citizenship Give him the strength. We lift up his hands, Father, in Jesus' name. And yes, and Elizabeth, yes, also making those flags. That's going to be a wonderful income. Selling products on Amazon, writing my books and prophetic ministry. Mandy, this is good. Just keep it out there. Keep it out there. You must, all of you out there, you must keep it fresh. You must keep it fresh. You must be updating your stuff all the time, doing your lives, uh, presenting your product. Um, Elizabeth, I just can't think of your surname now, Elizabeth, whose husband's coming home shortly. Um, Harlock, Elizabeth Harlock. Um, she puts up her fitness regime every morning that she does. Her boxing and her weights. And it was watching her, her uh, live in the day, in the morning when I get up, that provoked me today that I would not go another day without getting out and walking. And so did my two Ks this morning and will do another two this evening. And so that's amazing. That's amazing. Let us lift each other up. And um, as we promote others, you will come automatically into the promotion of our God. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that lovely? I see Bea de Toys online and Bea and them just got a brand new puppy. And he, that little puppy looks adorable, Bea, adorable. And uh, you just got such a big heart. And for you and for Daniel, I really pray that as you are feeding the poor and looking after the needy, that you are also getting ready for that door to open to go back into Zambia and to continue the crusades. And we pray for you every day. We pray for Daniel and Bia to toy for the evangelistic ministry that God has put upon them. A young couple, but man, what an anointing. And so thank you, Father, that you prosper them in all their ways. Yes, uh, thank you, Gerda. Yes, I've watched your progress too, Gerda. And uh, I don't think uh, it's all dependent on the gym down the road. It's about saying, from today, I'm adding fruit, I'm adding salad, and I'm adding movement to my body and making sure that my steps are more than they've been in lockdown. They're not very good. Uh, thank you, Gray Berry. Um, I want to say to you, Pastor Gray, uh, that... Um, 
for you as well. Time to get online. Time to put your stuff out there like never before. I see your uh, sphere of influence just getting wider and wider and wider and wider. Uh, and, and so just rejoice and be glad. Uh, isn't it wonderful that the Father brought you to the, penin the South Peninsula? And uh, what a place for us as the, the leaders of ministries to be uh, sojourning for Jesus by the seaside. <laughs> I think this is our season of great reward, of great reward. You know, um, uh, people of God, how kind God is to give us his best gifts. And during lockdown, God is destroying the competition and destroying the um, suspicion where leaders are suspicious. Why? Why are you on so-and-so's live? Why are you watching this and watching that? It's like God has thrown wide the curtains and said, come and eat of the richest of fare, for you are all my body. You are all my children. I am the head of the church. And so now you can walk in the field of God. Come on, people. The people of God belong to God, so don't hold back. When you see your friends' names coming up, give them that prophetic word. Uh, Karen has a word for Jewel Buerta. She says to you, uh, Jewel, scroll up and you'll see I've left you a word. Yes, uh, this is the season that we, the gifts of God, will feel celebrated. The other day when I was on Barbara and Skulk's uh, live and they said, uh, Rose is the senior pastor and Barbara is a senior pastor of a ministry as well. I went, wow, I didn't know that. That there are more of us women that are the senior pastors of, uh, of our flock. But I want to say to you that the Lord has shown me very clearly in this time that we need to release the body to the people. We need to release the people that are sitting there to the others in the body that have a heart to pastor. You don't have to be an appointed pastor in a leadership. You just have to look after one another so that us that are standing there as the front of the arrow can get on can get on with our apostolic prophetic call, which is without limit and walls. We will be there. We will train you. We will teach you. But you must do the work of the ministry wherever you find yourself. You're, you are God's gift, and your gift and calling belongs to you under the hand of God. And you, we are here to confirm what the Father has put on each other. So this morning I close now with this. Please do not worry. Um, there's enough people online that can send you a word later and we'll be back tomorrow. So if you feel like you slip through the cracks, we're here every morning to encourage you. But I want to close with this. Pray. And I'm going to pray a release over you that you will walk in the fullness of the call that God has put on you and I'm going to break off the bonds that have kept you in confinement. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I come before the throne of grace. I thank you that you have given your children good gifts 
I thank you, Jesus, that as you ascended after the resurrection and you had been and you cleansed the heavenlies and you walked with the disciples and you said to them, I must go so that another that is exactly like me can come and that they were to wait for the Holy Spirit. But it says, and as you ascended, you gave give good gifts unto mankind. I thank you for the gift and calling on each of those that have come under the sound of this live this morning and the message that will be shared as they will share it with others on their pages, that your children, that they will come under the, the, the breaker anointing, the breaker anointing. I uh, send this breaker anointing from the hand of God this morning to break you out of your season of limitation, your season of despair, your season of depression, the season where you were dialed down. I break you out by that breaker anointing, by the apostolic call and the prophetic call of God. I say the Lord himself says, let my my people go and father says you will walk in the highways and the byways you will spread my word and I see the mushrooms of ministry and and somebody said the other day they saw mushrooms of ministry as these big new churches I'm not too sure about that I want to say to you that the church is going to be the church wherever she finds herself and yes there will be times to go to those buildings don't get me wrong but I see the mushrooming of many ministries that you can inside of you that's not been able has been stifled under a pyramid scheme of this is how it has to be and we have to be accountable well the word of God says that when you have the Holy Spirit you don't even need a teacher but may we be humble and may we stay under the teaching of the voice of the Father may we incline our ear to hear may we confirm with one another for the uh, by the voice of ones or twos the thing is established I want to honor you this morning and thank you father for those that are on this line of other nations i thank you that our our fellowship has become international i thank you father that i have people in dublin in england in new zealand um, in Port Nolith, up the coast, in Jeffreys Bay, that I can, that we together as the children of God can call on and say, please, you are over there and I've heard of this person. Will you pick up that burden on this line and will you make contact and will you prophesy? You see, you don't even at this moment need to have the airplane ticket. You can begin to minister into international territory as we connect with one another on the international airwaves. And so I thank you, Father. The yoke is broken. The bonds of restriction have been burnt by that breaker anointing today. I thank you for witty inventions, divine revelations, expansions on every side. And, and, and I want to break this. I feel like there are some that are saying, I need income because I'm saving for my retirement. And I want to say to you that we need to break that. That is not how you meant to live. We want God to give you an income and um, find a, a, a liberal blessing of finance till the day Jesus comes. It's not about retirement. The minute you say that, you're putting yourself in a limitation. So Father, I thank you right now that there's no time for retirement. There's only time for refirement. And I thank you that the financial flow for your children, whether they're this side of 60 or that side of 80, it doesn't matter where you are in this equation. I thank you, Father, for steady supply, steady supply, steady supply that will continue to flow with not with decrease, but with increase. Thank you, Father. Uh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I take off the ancient locks that have been put on the people's provision. I stand between heaven and earth in the area of seed time and harvest. And the area of first fruits, we have just come through the first fruit harvest of the wheat harvest and of Pentecost and Passover. And Father, we waved our first fruits before you. And I ask now, Father, for such a return, such a return, just as you gave Ruth the field, not just the sheaves at the edge of the field. She became the owner of the field. She was the woman owner next to Boaz. She went from uh, gleaning for the, the sheaves that they left for the poor 
to being a business owner of a field of wheat. And that is the acceleration that we release this morning on your children to go from a begging bowl to being um, in business. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Woo -hoo -hoo. We, <clears throat> we have promulgated some things in the heavens this morning because we have been given authority to do so and we have come alongside each other in the power of agreement. Have an awesome day. Share this message with your friends, as many as you can, so they too can come into their season of divine release, not living on this low level of other people's ideas. You need to know, people are not happy when you prosper. Oh, why did God give it to them and not to me? And that shuts off your supply. And so you need to every day say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for my supply. I say to the Lord, Lord, I see my bank balance has come down quite a bit. And I just give you permission, Lord, to fill it up. And then, ching, ching, somebody decided to bless me. <laughs> and you go, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. May the blessing increase for all of us. Have a wonderful day. I love you. You're amazing. You are totally amazing. Thank you for all the lovely feedback I get. I get lovely messages from you guys afterwards on Messenger. How your life has changed, how you've grown, how you've been healed, how you've come into new dimensions, how you almost felt like you were nearly backslidden. And yeah, in this time, God has revived you. And I want you to share this, even with your unsaved friends. Men and women that are in business, uh, just because they haven't fully made their commitment to Jesus, still need to hear about the goodness of the Lord. Okay, I'm not going to delay. Goodbye, love you all. I will read through all your messages. And I'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. And then Magali, uh, who is in Dublin, I'm going to be on her Zoom live tonight on her prayer group. I'm looking forward to that, but it's not, it's not put up anywhere. So I will see everybody else tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. God bless you.